So we briefly defined what a differential equation is. We made a distinction between what an algebraic equation is and what a, a differential equation is. We, we did an example and we saw the differences here how, well, for an algebraic equation, we, the result of those equations are values as opposed to differential equations whose results are functions that a differential equation contains as our unknowns, a function and at least one of its derivatives. So, all right, so applications of these differential equations, well, they're pretty much everywhere. So, uh, and one of the models that, uh, that you have worked with before in mostly pre-calculus and intermediate algebra is population growth or radioactive decay. And you might remember that model given by um, P of T equals P initial e to the kt, where P initial is typically, well, the initial population, this value of k is the growth or decay constant. That depends on the sign of k. So in this case, if k is negative, it's a number less than zero. Well, what do we have? That means decay. And when k is greater than zero, that is, it's positive. In this case, we're talking about growth. So the same model is actually used to model the same situation, population growth or population decay. Well, the decay is mostly used in temperature situations like Newton's law of cooling and what else? Uh, decay of bacteria, you know, or population dying using the exact same uh, the exact same model. Well, so so back in, in pre-calculus or in intermediate algebra, you were just asked to memorize that formula. So today, later to well, actually later today, or maybe now I think it's going to be next time. Uh, we're going to learn how to solve this equation. And well, so essentially, what do, what what is this? equation um, modeling. Well, so the way we interpret this equation is a rate of change. So the change in the population size with respect time, because that's what happens in, in a community. Popula population changes with respect time and it's proportional to its size. Well, that's the baby model. That's the toy model, if you will, actually uh, only considering time and population size. But of course, we know there's other factors that uh, intervene when it comes to analyzing population growth and decay, such as, um, you know, if people are sick or uh, the conditions uh, of the community, which are not considered here in this baby model. So we really use it to, um, what's it called? To, play with the exponential models, to play with solving differential equations, of course. There's another model, so if we adapt this, um, you know, this same model to chemical reactions, when you have a reactant A becoming uh, react, re becoming product B, right? So, so what happens in, in a chemical reaction? Well, in general, because there's a lot of mathematical models that model chemical reactions, and um, that's gonna be a lot useful for those of you that are chemistry majors or biology majors that require to take some, or to, to take many chemistry courses. Well, so we can model the, so what happens in a chemical reaction? So the reactant uh, runs out to give rise a product. All right, so for example, in this case, we can model this, D, the concentration of A, which usually is the molar concentration, that is moles per liter. And, uh, and that changes with respect time well. In this case, I'm gonna call this a negative KT because usually um, the chemical reaction, well, again, the reactant gets lost. And this gives rise to the product B, it's K, T. And well, if we want to look at the profile of the chemical reaction, so what do we have? Well, initially in our flask, in our chemical reaction system, we start with an initial concentration of some reactant, but what happens uh, at some time? Well, the, 
the, pro the reactant becomes product and eventually we run out of, of this reactant. And at the same time, so that's uh, the reactant A. And at the same time, we don't, we don't have any of the product. And as the reaction progresses, that's, uh, well, actually not this way. It's this way, exponentially, all right? That's our product B, all right? So these are the profiles of the different chemical species in a chemical reaction. And well, not surprisingly, these are modeled by differential equations. And in this case, well, for, for those of you who have taken a chemistry class, and if you have looked at chemical kinetics, well, these are this model a first order chemical reaction well you're not expected to know all this to understand this all i'm showing you is how these are modeled by a um, uh, chemical but i mean by a differential equation and when solving this it's going to give us a very similar model that is the concentration of the reactant at any time it's the initial concentration the one we start at the beginning of the experiment times e to the negative kt. That's what, if we want to know what's the concentration, well, depending after five minutes or after five hours, depending on the units of time that we use. And surprise, it's the same model. And this is one of the simplest models when it comes to number one, population growth and other situations like chemical reactions. There's other pretty cool complex systems of chemical reactions when, when you have some reacting becoming uh, a product, but at the same time, that product becomes uh, a second product, and that gives rise to a pretty cool system of differential equations. And uh, we use other advanced methods. Well, unfortunately, we won't we won't cover these methods because we will look only at uh, separation of variables. However, um, all these methods. You will learn it back, you will learn it when you take your differential equations class. All right, so uh, well, without get, getting into too many cases of applications, let's classify general differential equations. So, number one, a differential equation that contains an unknown function of one or more of its derivatives, right? And the order of the differential equation, so we classify the equation by their order. And the order of the equation is going to be the highest derivative that occurs in the differential equation. So, for example, the first equation right here, dy dx minus 2, e to the 2xy equals to the square root of x. So in this case, we need to observe the derivative symbol. And what's the order of the derivative? In this case, well, it's only the first derivative. So this will be uh, first order differential equation. All right. And of course you can have you can have many different symbols for derivatives when you look at differential equations. Well in the first in the first example we had the Leibniz notation for the derivative which clearly shows the quotient between dy and dx. But other notations are the prime notation, and all we have to do here is, well, identify the highest order derivative. In this case, well, we have y, we have y, y prime, and y double prime, because that's the highest derivative order in this case. This will be a second second order de. For now, that's how we're going to classify differential equations. Um, of course, there there is a more deep, there is a deeper classification of um, of differential equations based on whether these are furthermore linear or nonlinear. We're not going to get into those details because ultimately we're going to look at one simple method, the separation of error, and the other classification of equations are partial 
uh, differential equations and those involve partial derivatives. However, you guys are in Calc 2, you haven't learned about partial derivative. That's something you will learn next semester in Calculus 3. And once you get into the partial derivatives, well, you will be ready to see these further classifications of uh, differential equations. And those are pretty cool equations so that they're also um, appear in chemistry. So those of you who are in chemistry might have seen the Schrodinger's equation. It's a pretty pretty big equation based on partial derivatives and the potential function. Well, that's a partial differential equation. And well, you'll, you, you'll see about that when you get to physical chemistry. Those of you who are chemistry majors or quantum physics, quantum mechanics, that's where you where you will focus on those equations. All right. In the meantime, so let's keep the working on more definitions about differential equations. Well, uh, we're going to define, we're going to make a distinction between a general solution and a particular solution. Well, uh, well, I guess I should have used this example in the previous page. Well, just to the, the differential equation y prime equals to two x, whose uh, solution is y equals x squared plus c. All right. Now. Uh, well, guess what? So all this time that you have been solving different, that you have been evaluating integrals, all this time you have been solving differential equations, but they never told you. And that's because, well, the first time you, you got into, into integration, well, so let's say we have the function y equals, again, x squared. So in Calc 1, what did we do in Calc 1? Take the take derivatives. So y prime equals to 2x, all right? And then uh, sometime in the middle of the semester or the second third of the semester in Calc 1, you learn something called the differential. So in this case, we no longer treated this, this y prime as one single symbol to say derivative. In fact, even if you used the symbol dy dx yes it's also most of the time you treat it like one symbol to say oh the derivative however when it came to the differentials we give this symbol a new meaning and we actually started treating this symbol as the quotient between two numbers the quotient between dy and dx and well to find the differential what we did is to multiply both sides by dx and so dy equals to x dx. So that's the differential as opposed to the derivative. And then from the differential, you constructed the next uh, big result in calculus, which is the integral. But I mean, they, they just don't told you, oh, it's just the opposite of taking derivative, which is actually the integral, in fact. Um, we went uh, through the historical context of finding areas under rectangles, adding infinitely many of those. You know the whole story, the same story that we have been using to find arc lengths, to find surface areas and the like, right? So, well, so essentially from here what we do is to integrate both sides to get the integral, I mean, to get the original function, and that's x squared plus c. Well, so this is what you have been doing since the last couple of weeks in calculus one and a good portion of this semester evaluating integrals. But evaluating integrals is basically solving a differential equation, but they didn't tell you that because, well, that was a lot of vocabulary, uh, like what does that mean and how are we going to use those, you know? So whenever we have this, um, this differential equations, well, uh, we are obtaining what we call the general solution. And I think I also mentioned, I mentioned this last time. So this is the general solution. And this general solution is essentially, it's a portrait or a picture of a family of functions. Well, this and this c in this case, this constant of integration, depending on its value, that's going to give us a picture of a particular member of the family of functions in this case. For example, for different values of c. Let me write a few results, for example. So let me make it a little smaller. Yep. 
So for c equals to 0, for example, c equals to 1, and c equals to negative 3. So what are we going to have for c equals to 0? Well, we're going to have uh, y equals x squared plus c, which is just 0. What are we going to have for c equals 1? y equals x squared plus 1. And finally, y equals x squared minus 3. Well, essentially, looking at the general solution, this is a family of parabolas shifted one up or down depending on the value of c. So let's graph this family of parabolas. So in this case, well, let's go about y equals x. Well, that's just the regular parabola, 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 2, 4, and negative 2, 4. Let's just connect the dots and draw the graph of this parabola, right? Now, well, without plotting points for the other two solutions, uh, this x squared plus 1 and x squared minus 3, they only represent shiftings from vertical shiftings, more in particular, of the pairing graph of y equals to x squared. So on the number 1, so plus 1, that means we're going to shift with this graph one, we, one unit up. So let's use the corresponding color. Right, and the last graph x squared minus 3 that's going to represent a function shifted down 3 units All right well it doesn't have to be the perfect graph right I mean ultimately we're just looking at the picture and what does that mean now this set of equations here or functions are called particular solutions as opposed to just a general solution. The general solution in, involves a, con, a, C, a, a constant C which can be any value as opposed to a particular solution it actually has a particular value of C and in this case given that value of C we would be able to look at its graph and see the member of the family of functions for that particular value of C. Alright, so uh, for the first example, well, how do we obtain those or how do we find a particular member of the family of functions? So let's go back to the same differential equation. Alright, so find a solution for the differential equation y prime equals to 2x, so that is dy dx equals to 2x. Well, so again, we have to separate the variables, although we're going to describe this method in more detail later in, well, I think maybe ne later next week. So that's 2x dx. So we're solving the equation. And recall that when we solve an equation, we always uh, do the inverse operations required to isolate a particular term. In this case, we want to solve for y. So we need to solve for dy first by doing the reverse operation always. So in this case, we are dividing by dx. We do the opposite, which is multiply by dx on both sides. And then, um, uh, we, now that we have the dy by itself, we need to do the reverse or the inverse of the differential. What's that? What's that? It's an integral, so integrate both sides. So y equals to x squared plus c. Notice, uh, notice how I'm adding the constant of integration only on one side and not the left hand side. So I'll explain that later when we get into the separation of variables method more in detail. So, but essentially in practice, that's what we do um, by a process called absorption, which I will explain later. All right. So, well, so that's our general solution. Again, well, it's the same as the previous one. So in this case, okay, let me label this as a general solution. So let's find a particular solution that satisfies the condition 0, 5. Essentially, we're looking for 
the family member of the the member of the family of functions the particular one that contains the point zero comma five so this condition this function notation what what really means is x equals to zero and y equals to five that's how we interpret these conditions and uh, all we have to do is plug in these numbers in the given differential equation so that's going to be y equals to 5 and that's a 0 squared so 5 equals to 0 squared plus c and well 0 squared is just 0 and c equals to 5 so this means that we're going to write this equation the following way y equals x squared plus, plus 5 and this is the particular solution so that's uh, that's a particular member of the family that contains the point zero 05 so that's a particular <coughs> particular solution all right Again, that's another difference on what the general solution is and what the particular solution is. So for the general solution, we just solve the equation and leave the, leave the result in terms of a C. For a particular solution, we'll go the extra mile by finding the function or the constant of integration based on a given initial condition like in this case. All right, what else about the beginning of uh, differential equations well so we already did a little bit of verifying solutions in the first page you know we solved uh, a very simple differential equation and then we checked the solution and to make sure that it works that or actually that it checks both sides of it right so in the same way that we did it with algebraic equations of course we're gonna do a little bit more about it so all we have to do again we're given uh, a function and they're asking us whether this equa or whether this function is a solution to this differential equation so all we have to do is calculate so it's only a matter of calculating the necessary derivatives the, the, the derivative the equation is asking us for well in this case we have this equation y double prime minus y prime minus 2y equals to 2 so that means in this case the highest order derivative this equation is asking us for is the second derivative so let's go about finding the second derivative of the function so y equals to e to the 2x plus e to the negative x minus 1 the first derivative y prime equals well uh, itself for the exponential e to the 2x times the derivative of the exponent which is 2 uh, well the derivative of the exponential e to the negative x is itself e to the negative x but uh, the derivative of negative x is negative 1 so minus 1 and the derivative of negative 1 well that's a constant well that's zero All right so that's the first derivative then let's find the second derivative and well the derivative of 2 e to the 2x well it's going to be itself e to the 2x times the derivative of 2x again which is 2 but times the 2 that we already have in here that becomes a 4 and then the derivative of negative e to the negative x well the derivative of the exponential is itself e to the negative x times the derivative of negative x which is negative 1 but that negative 1 multiplying with the negative that we had already should become a positive so so far we have the two derivatives of the, of the given of the proposed solution so now we will verify the equation all we have to do here is number one uh, okay let me highlight the original function we're going to substitute where it corresponds for y we will let me highlight the first derivative And that's going to go where we see the first derivative term, all right? And lastly, the second derivative of the function, 
which should be this madness here and should be replaced in here all right that's all we have to do all right let's go ahead and do that so number one the second derivative which is 4 e to the 2 x plus e to the negative x so that's the second derivative minus and be careful open parentheses because this minus is negative is going to affect all the terms of the first derivative so that's 2 e to the 2 x minus e to the negative x and minus 2 times the original function e to the 2 x plus e to the negative x minus 1 and hopefully all this is equal to 2 so let's develop the left hand side let's simplify the left hand side by number one distributing the negative on the second term and distri distributing the negative two on the third term so distribute 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 all right so the first two terms remain the way they are that's uh, 4 e to the 2 x plus e to the negative x and then minus 2 e to the 2 x minus minus becomes a plus e to the negative x and over here negative 2 times e to the 2 x that becomes negative 2 e to the 2 x minus 2 e to the negative x and negative times a negative careful that becomes a 2 plus 2 all right so here's the part where we will look for any like terms and combine them or cancel them out when whatever whatever actually works well so okay so what do we have here so we have terms that contain powers of e, well e to the power 2x we have terms that are e to the negative x let's look at each terms individually so i'm going to uh, have two bars for the two x powers and one bar for for the negative x power so what do we have 4 minus 2 which is 2 and minus 2 isn't that zero okay so actually we can just cancel them out what else the e to the negative x so that's uh, e to the negative x so that's in essentially an invisible one plus another invisible one that becomes a 2 minus 2 oh those cancel on the other hand what what terms do actually survive the cancellation well only the ver the sole two that we got in the end but that's also equal to the right hand side and in this and in this case that given function is indeed a solution to this differential equation and that's because both sides well, when substituting the corresponding derivatives of the given function, both sides of the equation still agree. If we got in something weird like 0 equals to 5, 9 equals to 7, well, um, that's not a solution to the equation. All right. Let's do another example of verifying uh, solutions of differential equations. Well, uh, let's determine whether this given function c1 cosine 2x plus c2 sine 2x is a solution of the differential equation y squared, I mean y double prime plus 4y equals e to the negative 4x. All right, let's see if indeed this is a solution. So number one. The differential equation calls for the original function and also calls up to the second derivative. That means that we're going to get that, we're going to grab this proposed solution, this madness here, and find the second derivative of that function. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So y, which is c1 cosine 2x plus c2 sine 2x, Find the first derivative first, even though we're not going to need the first derivative when plugging it back to the equation. Well, we still need to get the first derivative in order to get to the second derivative, right? So, well, so the first derivative, y prime, that's uh, the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine, negative c1 sine 2x, times, by chain rule, the derivative of 2x, which is 2. And then, uh, plus c2 and I left a space for the coefficient so that's uh, the derivative of sine which is cosine 
2x times the derivative of 2x, well, by mini chain rule, that to the derivative of 2x is 2. So that's the first derivative, all right? So let's look at the second derivative, dot y double prime. So um, that's going to be c1, the derivative of sine, which is cosine 2x times the derivative of 2x, but the derivative of this, of this 2x is 2. But that 2 times the negative 2 that we already had from the first derivative, isn't that going to become a negative 4? And minus, well, because the derivative of cosine is negative, I'm going to leave a space for the coefficient, c2, the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine, 2x, times by chain rule the derivative of 2x, well, but that 2, the derivative of 2x, which is 2, rather, but that 2, multiplying with the 2 that we already have, it's 4, all right? So those are the two, the two derivatives of the, of the given function. Let's plug them in the differential equation and determine whether indeed these are um, solutions to, is a solution to the given differential equation. So let me highlight just so you, I can, so you can see actually what are we plugging in? In this case, again, we're not using the first derivative because the differential equation doesn't require the first derivative, but again, we needed it to, um, to get the, the second derivative. So let's, let's do this. So negative 4 C1 cosine 2x minus 4 C2 sine 2x plus 4 times the original function, which is c1 cosine 2x plus c2 sine 2x. And that, is that equal to e to the negative 4x? That's the question. All right, so the only thing that we really need to do here is the following. It's uh, distribute the 4. negative 4, c1 cosine 2x minus 4, c2 sine 2x plus 4, c1 cosine 2x plus 4, c2 sine 2x. Is that equal to e to the negative x? Well, uh, let's have a look. I think at this point we can Combine like terms or cancel terms out. Well, it it seems like we can cancel the cosine terms and the sine terms pairwise. And what is that going to give us? Zero equals e to the negative four x. And well, what is that statement going to tell us? Is that a solution to the equation? No. All right. So that means y equals to C1 cosine 2x plus C2 sine 2x is not a solution. All right. I think this finishes this section uh, 9.1. Uh, let's see. Let's have a look real quick at uh, at least a couple of minutes on the next section. All right. Mm -hmm. there, there it is. Section 9.2, direction fields and Euler's method. Well, what are these direction fields? Well, actually, well, I just wrote the 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 full name of this of the section but we don't cover the Euler's method all right so let me just cross it out so it's just direction all right so it turns out that not every not every differential equation 
can be solved using analytic methods, you know, like the separation of variables that we will discuss in the next section, or any of the dozens of methods that you will learn when you take the class, the differential equations, class, like solving linear um, differential equations, exact differential equations, Euler's equations, a bunch of uh, different forms of differential equations. In some cases, the modeling of a situation in real life gives rise to an equation that none of the methods fit. So we, so we need to, uh, to look into other techniques to solve differential equations and one of them is numerical, uh, solving using numerical methods to find, act, to find actually the slopes or looking at the picture of the solution to the differential equation. Well, how, what's that about anyway? All right, so, um, so let's see. So in this case, um, we're, going, we're going to look at a graphic approach. That's the other approach. So we have analytical approach and using the methods, a lot of algebra, a lot of calculus, uh, infinite series and the like, you know, different methods and numerical methods that you will learn in your higher levels of math uh, or actually some, some if not all of you, the, in, the engineering majors will take that course, numerical methods or numerical analysis. So it's basically using program, a programming language, typically, my, typically MATLAB or today I believe they're using Python and model different mathematical situations such as solving equations, such as finding numerical integrals and solving differential equations actually using those programs, all right? Well, so in this case, we're gonna look at the graphic approach and that graphic approach is called the direction fields. Well, so these direction fields look like this, all right? Um, and you may have seen these direction fields before. So for those of you who have taken a physics class, you will look or that you will take a physics class or in particular, I believe it's a second semester physics where you look at the magnetic and or electrical fields. Well, those are modeled like this, you know, so it's the direction of the potential, you know, that we have, whether this is electrical potential or magnetic potential, different ways to, to, to say this, right? So, all right, so, but uh, let's look at the differential equation and how this differential equation has the following picture. So, so I mean, it, it's like, I don't know, maybe, so this, this direction field, it's basically the selfie, if you will, of this differential equation. But how that works, how do we, we describe this? Number one, uh, because it's all symbols and then a graph that apparently doesn't even have anything to do well. Number one, let's analyze every single term. So number one, the term on the left hand side, that's the derivative. The derivative is, again, the definition of the derivative is the slope at a given point. All right, that's what it is. Over here, the terms on the right hand side because the left hand side is a slope, the slope equals to x plus y. So in words, for this particular example, we will describe the slope is defined or slope is defined by the sum by the sum of the x and, and the y of the given 
of the given point. Alright? So, that means that every single point on, on, the, on the picture of the differential equation right here, if I select this point for example, that point has, has, a, has a slope. This point has another value of a slope. This point right here has another value of the slope. Over here, at this point, it has another value of the slope. Now, in particular, they're asking us to find the, or to sketch the graph of the particular solution that contains the point zero comma one. Again, um, this is basically, again, well, like the blueprint of the picture of the family of functions that are solutions to this baby differential equation. Well, so in this case, uh, think of this again like a magnetic field. So uh, we can trace many, many solutions. Like we can trace this solution, we can trace this other solution, we can trace this other solution. You know, we can have many, many possibilities here. But in this case, well, they're asking us for a particular solution. And well, that particular solution that contains the point 0, 1. So I'm going to go to the point 0, 1, which in this case um, happens to be this function, which is the same one on the right-hand side. But I wanted to have the blank one first and the filled-in one as well. And well, all we have, if possible, well, now solve the equation uh, algebraically. Well, unfortunately, this equation cannot be solved by the separation of methods anymore. So we will have to look for another method, but that's going to be in your differential equation class, not in this class, because for this topic in particular, we're just looking for um, for the for the picture only. And well, the objective is not go beyond that method of solution, all right?